Giga Texas is 28% complete. And here's the math. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. In this video, I'm going to show you how I counted everything compared to the final plan, and then make some very bold, surely mistaken assumptions to see how I came up with these numbers. So let's divide it into five categories, site prep, foundation, framing, roofs, and interior completion. Of all the Tesla factories, Giga Texas required by far the most site prep. There were large trenches that were left over from its time as a sand and gravel mine and hills that needed to be knocked down. While we don't know the full extent of the site they intend to use, it's fairly evident from shots like these that it's not complete, even though it's complete enough for work to continue. In terms of surface area, we may find out we're closer to 85% final graded, but in terms of the time and expense needed to complete it, it's closer to 95% since nothing is remotely close to as involved as what they've done already. So how big is it? The site map posted to the Travis County website shows the original footprint, which was meant to include three distinct buildings. It's now clear from watching the progress videos that the dividing roads are gone and it will be one contiguous building instead. Using the scale provided in the map key, we can see that the buildings will be almost 1,200 feet wide. Looks like 1,180 feet to me. Each of these overlays are 1,200 feet long, so one, two, three marks 3,600 with another 200-ish feet and change, we'll say 3,820. That's about four and a half million square feet, even when factoring in the loss of the emerald cuts at each end. I've never heard a practical reason for this shape, but the bears assure me that it's because Elon always cuts corners. And that four and a half, we'll say 4.4 million square feet, is only at ground level. It does not include additional floors, of which there are already some. Estimating completed foundation work was a bit harder. Joe Techmeyer estimates the space between pillars at 35 feet, though I've also seen estimates of 38 feet. In order for the site plan to match the footings, they'd need to be 45 feet apart, so there's something off in my math. If you can see the problem, let me know in the comments so I can correct it before the next one of these. That 4.4 million square foot figure seems too high for what we're seeing on the ground, so I don't know, let me know. So thanks to Joe's video from Saturday, I can see there are 27 spans across the width of the property. That means that this block is 17 of 35 by 35 foot sections at a minimum, though potentially 38 feet or larger. Across the waistband, you can see there are 17 times 26 blocks with footers complete or close enough that they will be probably by the time you see this. So that's over 500,000 square feet right there or 50,000 square meters. Over here at the Austin city limits in the south by southwest corner of the site, there are 15 times 12 blocks for another 220,000 square feet, which would be 20,000 square meters. Other areas, like the specific northwest corner of the site, haven't even gotten geopiers yet. This will probably require cementitious foundations due to the fact that it is on top of a swamp. And this 13 by 17 block area is around 270,000 square feet, or 25,000 square meters. There are a lot of individual areas here, and I ran the math on all of them before taking the time to stop and just draw out a site map that covers all of it. So although the foundation work looks increasingly like it's almost done, it isn't. It's only 43% complete. I spent a few hours poring over the last few days of footage from Jeff Roberts and Joe Tegtmeyer putting together my site map. So here we go. Let me share it with you now. The site is oriented true north. The beige indicates footings, light gray indicates framing, the dark gray indicates roof sections, dark beige and, or orange indicates pit areas, the long skinny one being the serrated pit, which the other guys call the zipper pit. The odd shaped one is the big pit closer to the river. So looking at this, you can see just how much work is left to be done. The framing work is a lot easier to count but they're an insignificant percentage of the total site at around 2% complete each. And of course, the finished roof and exterior are 0% complete, as is the interior work. 
All this is to say that as quickly as things are moving, they are desperately far from done. The anticipated dry-in date at the end of this month appears all but impossible. This factory may come online within a year of groundbreaking, but that may depend more on what you consider to be the benchmark for groundbreaking. A year from first foundation work? I believe that without hesitation. But a year from first earthworks? That may be a tougher sell. I'm happy to make this a weekly feature if you guys are like me and can't help but watch the progress bar tick up during a download. So get ready to get mad at me, or at least my math, because I'm about to tell you when the factory will be finished. But first, I need to hear from the experts. I imagine my equal weighting for each of these categories is painfully oversimplified, but what's a better way of weighting them? What am I missing or misunderstanding? Feedback is welcome, and I do read every comment you guys post, so help me make next week's math that much smarter. Okay, so here we go. The work at Giga Texas began on July 22nd, which was 145 days ago. If we're at 28% complete, that means it will take 513 days to finish the factory. In other words, the date of completion at the current rate will be December 16th of 2021. Now I understand that a third shift was added, and I don't actually think it will take that long to see the first model roll off the line, but that's what the projection shows. My guess is July 15th, which would still be the fastest of all the factories, but I'd love to hear your guess. And tell me how often you want to see this math run again with updated numbers. Weekly? Monthly? I don't know. I'm flexible, but I want to thank you for being here and give a massive shout out to my 348 subscribers. I don't know who you guys are, but you keep me motivated to keep up this madness. And I thank you for joining me on my Tesla weekend. Even if it is Monday.